Hey everyone. Today we're going to take a look at multiple object systems. Uh, sometimes these are called two-body systems, um, but we can we can definitely start to take a look at three and four and five. But um, to get us started, I thought we'd start with the situation where you have somebody pulling up on a string that's attached to a two kilogram box, which is in turn attached to a second string. I labeled these rope A and rope B. Um, then attached to an eight kilogram box. So the first thing that we want to do when we're going to analyze a multiple object system is we want to figure out the direction of the acceleration. And that's not always so evident. Um, I know that the force of rope A on the two kilogram box is 60 newtons, but that's pretty much all I know so far in terms of forces. When you're analyzing a multiple object system, you have a lot of decisions that you can make. One of the first things that is possible is to decide what system you'd like to analyze. So to get us started, I'm going to analyze both boxes um, as my system. And what's interesting about problems that deal with ropes and these kinds of things, we're making an assumption, um, assuming that the ropes are massless. And I know that might sound kind of silly because, okay, if something were massless wouldn't have mass, then, I mean, wouldn't exist, right? But when we make this assumption that the ropes are massless, we're not accounting, we're not accounting for that when we apply Newton's second law. And the second thing is if we see that the ropes are massless, we're told to make this assumption that the ropes are massless, then we know that whatever the tension is throughout a particular rope, that that tension is the same at any point. So what I'd like to do at first is I want to figure out what direction acceleration is in. So in order to do that, I want to analyze the system of both boxes. So I'm going to draw a force diagram for both boxes. And just as a habit, I like to kind of write what the mass of each system that I'm going to analyze is. So in this case, our mass is 10 kilograms. So I'm going to model this as a point. And I know that I have a weight force of 10 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity. So this is about negative 100 newtons. And then I would say, OK, what's touching my system? Well, rope A is touching my system. And in the problem, I know that the tension in rope A is 60 newtons. So this is an interesting force diagram because tension in rope A, force of rope A on both is less than the weight force. So this means that our F net is down for this system. That means that acceleration is also downward. So in the problem, this person is pulling these boxes up, but acceleration is downward. So what does that mean for motion? Well, what it means for us is that we know that this box is moving upwards. So we have a velocity up, so here's a velocity vector, and acceleration is downwards. So what that means is that this is moving up, but slowing down. So imagine yourself at the grocery store or something, and you lift up your bag of groceries. Eventually, you have this same type of motion situation where you're still lifting this bag up, but you're slowing down in order to, you know, in order to start carrying it, maybe start walking. So it's moving up, it's going to slow down um, so that you can eventually have this stop. So that's what we have going on here. So we have a downward acceleration and an F net down. Okay, so now that we know the direction of acceleration for the system of both boxes, we actually know the direction of the acceleration for each individual box as well because they're all connected. So they all move together here in terms of motion. Can we find F net for this system? 
Yeah, we definitely can. F net here is going to be the sum of these two forces. So F net here is going to be force of rho bay on both plus mg. So force of rope A is 60 newtons. And the weight force was negative 100 newtons. So our net force here is negative 40 newtons. OK, so now I know net force. I know the mass of this system. What's next? All right, so we'll find acceleration. So we know that acceleration is equal to F net over mass. So our acceleration is equal to negative 40 newtons all over 10 kilograms, because this system is 10 kilograms. So our acceleration is negative 4 meters per second squared. If acceleration for both boxes is negative 4 meters per second squared, then the acceleration of any individual box in our system is also negative 4 meters per second squared. In order to find the tension force in this bottom rope, I'm going to need to analyze a system in which I can have force of rope B on that particular system. And again, I have some options here. So, I can choose to analyze the system of the 2 kilogram box, or I could choose to analyze the system of the 8 kilogram box only. What is kind of nice about both of these situations is that we've already found the acceleration. So going into this, we know that the acceleration is negative 4 meters per second squared for either one of these. OK, so if I do a force diagram for the 2 kilogram box, so I'm considering just the 2 kilogram box, I'm going to ask myself, what's touching it? OK, well, I know that there is going to be force of rope B downward, okay? So ropes only pull on objects, so this is going to be force of rope B down. And I'm going to call this system on 2 for 2 kilogram box. What else is touching our 2 kilogram box? Oh, and by the way, we don't know this, right? This is what we're looking for, force of rope B. We don't know it. Well, rope A is definitely touching it, so I have force of rope A on two. And this one is a known, right? This is given in the problem as 60 newtons, so I'm going to write that one in. Anything else touching the two kilogram box? No, uh, but there is the field force, the gravitational field force, so we would have, oh, my battery's running low, so we would have mg just 2 kilograms times negative 10, so negative 20 newtons. Okay, net force in the x is 0. There are no uh, forces exerted in the x direction. And net force in the y direction is really what I'm interested in here. So net force in the y direction is equal to force of rope B on 2, which I don't know, plus mg, which is a known, plus force of rope A on 2. All right, so the sum of the forces here is equal to these three things added up. Problem is that I don't really have a number for some of the forces yet. What I can do is I can use Newton's second law for this particular system. Net force equals ma. Net force equals 2 kilograms times negative 4 meters per second squared. 
So our net force here is negative 8 newtons. And having it be negative 8 newtons does make sense to me because our acceleration is in the negative as well. So, so F net, we can substitute in our 8 newtons here, our negative. Sorry about that. Our negative 8 newtons. And again, we don't know F of rho B on it. This is going to be plus negative 20 plus 60 newtons. So what I end up getting over here is a positive 40. So I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. And I find that force of rope 2, force of rope B, I'm sorry, on 2 is negative 8 newtons plus a negative 48. So this is negative 48 newtons. I could analyze the system of 8 kilograms, but I found everything that I need here just by analyzing both boxes and the 2 kilogram system. So when you're looking at multiple object systems, it's important to kind of assess the whole situation find the direction of the acceleration, and then apply that acceleration to all of the individual systems.